There he is. We all good? All good. What's up, Rebel Rebel fans? Connor Laid here. Welcome to episode seven of New York Red Bulls virtual player appearances. Tonight, we're getting to know New York Red Bulls rookie defender Patrick Segrist. A big thank you goes out to our partner, Evian, for connecting us with you guys tonight. Please, fans, leave all your questions in the comments, and we'll get to as many of them as we can. We hope that you and your loved ones are staying safe and healthy during this difficult time. Now, let's find out a little bit more about number seven on your New York Red Bulls, rookie defender Patrick Segrist. Patrick, thank you for joining us tonight, buddy. Thank you for having me, Connor. How are you? Not bad. How about yourself? I'm good, just at home in my room. It's nice out in Chicago, so enjoying that a little bit. All right. I was going to ask if uh, you were home, if you were in Jersey, give the fans a little update on kind of where you are. Are you at your parents' house? Yeah, I'm at my house. I grew up here in Streamwood, Illinois. It's a small suburb outside of Chicago, about 45 minutes to an hour, depending on traffic. So grew up here ever since I was – one, two years old, and have been here ever since, so nice. it's good to well, be back. Love it. I'm sure your parents are happy to have you there as well and all your family. Yeah, definitely. You got, looks like your old club, Soccer Chicago, says hello on here. So. Yep. <laughs> been with go. them. I think I was with them for a number of years, ever since I was six until I was 17, so. Wow. There you go. That's a good run. Well, glad they're in the house to support you tonight. Patrick, why why don't you give us a little update on uh, what you've been up to? Yes. So recently I've just been staying up to date with all the workouts, doing the online video sessions with the team, Um, whether it's a Zoom call and whether it's a defenders or attackers meeting, been doing that. So we're all staying integrated, having uh, three-way FaceTime calls with a different amount of players each week. So enjoying that a lot, getting to know the guys on an even closer level. And then aside from soccer, I've been watching a lot of Netflix, I'd say. And then uh, aside from the workouts, I've been going on a lot of bike rides just around town just to keep the legs moving, staying fit. So nice. a lot of that. Yep. Awesome. Yeah, it's it's funny that you mention, uh, you know, you've only been with the team a, a few months, so you're still really getting to know a lot of the guys on a, on a personal exactly. level. So this has got to be tough for you. Uh, what kind of stuff have you guys been doing? Have you doing any like team bonding type stuff or mostly just like the FaceTimes? And have you done any games or anything like that? Uh, uh, when I was in Jersey before I came home, I was playing a lot of Monopoly with uh, Tom Barlow and okay. Sean Nealis. Yeah. So... Unfortunately, I haven't won yet. Sean Nealis won the first game. Have you guys so, picked up on any cyber Monopoly games since then? No, we haven't. And I'm I'm the type of guy who's not really like into video games very much. So I like the active games. Uh, at home, I've been playing cribbage with my mom. Okay. So that's nice. a game she taught me. But other than that, not a whole lot of uh, gaming for me. All right. Yeah. Just more staying active. I like it. Yeah. So tell us a little bit. Uh, you mentioned you grew up in Streamwood. Tell us a little bit about your hometown, what you love about it, what you miss about it, how it's a little bit different than, uh, say, the East Coast and living in Jersey. Yeah, I'd say I've always loved growing up in Streamwood. Uh, most of my soccer was in the Schaumburg area, which is about 20 minutes from my house, as well as my high school and my grade school going up. Okay. And I went to Catholic school, so that was near where soccer's home area is in right. Hoffman Estate, Schaumburg area. And then uh, one thing I'd say I miss about home a lot is just being able to play soccer in my backyard. And that's something you don't get a lot, whole lot of in Jersey. I have about a backyard the size of a soccer field. So it's good to just get out there and get the legs moving and a lot of memories with friends just being out and kicking the ball around. So Now, I, I know you haven't been on the East Coast for that long, per se, but is there one thing that you have enjoyed since you've been there? 
I'd say the thing I enjoy a lot about the East Coast is the amount of delis around. I would always stop in at uh, Mara's, that deli shop, and then yep. they're just like a ton everywhere. Yeah, that's one thing that you'll get all over the place. Good delis. Have you had the bagels yet? The pizza? Yeah, I've had the bagel. I don't know the name of it. It's by uh, one of my buddy's house. I think it's... I, I couldn't tell no you worries. the name Don't even worry about the name. <laughs> Just as long as you had a bagel, that's all we're worried yeah, about. Definitely. And I really like the New York pizza compared to Chicago style. I'm not a big deep dish guy, so wow. I really wow. enjoy it. People, I'm afraid, yeah, I'm afraid for you. you. Someone might take your Chicago card. I know. People do not like me saying I don't like deep dish, so... Yeah. I'm sure everyone uh, at the club is excited that you're saying you're excited about New York pizza. Exactly. How about, it's how about, unreal. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was just saying it's unreal. How about your family, uh, brothers and sisters? Uh, I have two half-sisters. One is okay. uh, recently engaged, so she's nice. uh, just moved in with him. And then the other is a librarian in uh, Wisconsin. So she went to... University of Wisconsin Madison, where I went to Marquette, and right. they are thirty one and thirty three years old, so okay. a lot older than me. All right, cool. Well, yeah. that's cool. You guys still stay in touch a lot? Yeah, for the most part. Uh they've been staying busy as much as they could, but they aren't like the active type of sisters. They didn't share that activeness with me, so just more staying inside and in reserve. All right. Yeah. Well, I'm sure it gives them uh, a reason to get out there a little bit more with you. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. How about uh, any early MLS memories? Did you have a favorite team growing up? Uh, not necessarily. I was I wasn't a fan of the Chicago Fire really because okay. I was a soccer's guy and we we didn't really get along in the academy days. But uh, one of my earliest memories was I went to my first fire game and uh it was actually ironically against red bulls when Thierry Henry was playing so yeah. that was like my first like mls memory at all and it's ironic because it was with the red bulls as well that's so funny now forgive me if i'm wrong but i heard you may have a jersey as well yeah i actually oh. have that same jersey let's I've see bought. it Long time there you ago. have it, Red Bull fans. Yep. There you go. Look it's, at that. I mean, it's, I think you're fitting in with the club already beautifully. It's That's perfect. I know. It's it's a knockoff, but, I mean, okay. the purpose is all that matters. <laughs> um, how, how does it feel? You're, so you wore the knockoff. How does it feel now being able to wear the real thing? Oh, it's amazing. I mean, it's a surreal moment to just – be playing in the MLS and to be playing for a club that cares so much about you and makes you feel like family is also just a great experience. That's awesome. Hey, we got a question real quick from one of the fans. What legendary RBNY player would you have liked to play with? Besides me, obviously. I'll take myself out of it. So you can All pick right. anyone else. I would say either Thierry Henry or Dax McCarty. Okay. Because I've trained with him a few times when it was their off season in the winter, and I heard he had a big impact on at Red Bulls in the past. So it'd be cool to play with him and definitely Terry Henry, just yeah. with all the history he has. So I think uh, you're gonna have to make sure to bring that jersey back east with you, and whenever you play Montreal, I think you're gonna have to find a moment where you can, you know, get on the side and have him sign that for you. That would be funny. But, yeah, I even have, like, a photo on Facebook of me just, like, taking a picture of him walking through the tunnel. So That's awesome. it's, it's cool. funny to see it all come full circle. That's so Yeah, cool. definitely. How about uh, – did you have a favorite team growing, out, growing up outside of MLS? I'd say a team I supported that still support today is Tottenham Hotspurs. Okay. So I was a big Gareth Bale fan. So he was kind of like my in inspiration with all the speed and the flair playing on the left side. So I really liked watching him growing up in the team. So nice. Another lefty. The lefty yeah. union, right? Definitely. <laughs> <laughs>
All right. How about, uh, so growing up in Chicago, are you a big Chicago sports fan outside of the Chicago fire, which also is very nice to hear for Red Bull fans? Yeah, I'd say I'm a Cubs and Bulls fan for the most part. And okay. not not really on the football side. Uh, I don't follow the Bears as much. Okay. But uh, definitely not a Sox fan. Okay. I always Get go it. to Wrigleyville and spend time with friends and family there. So nice. I've enjoyed that a lot. Awesome. Um, what Did you play any other sports growing up? Yeah, growing up I played baseball in my youth for quite a quite some time and yeah. funny story i actually quit playing baseball because one time i was just i was a uh, at bad and i would there's this one game i kept getting pegged with a ball and i'd walk to first because i'd get hit with the ball and then yeah. once the inning was over i would like run to my car and be like mom i'm, I'm not playing anymore <laughs> i'm not playing baseball and i'd say that wasn't the main reason I just didn't find it like as exciting as passionate as, as I did soccer and even my mom one of her memories of me playing baseball I was in the outfield when I was playing little league and I, I wasn't even paying attention to the game I, I just found a stick on the ground and I was just <laughs> digging a hole so I was just having fun <laughs> there you go I and then it. in grade school I played uh basketball and volleyball okay. and volleyball another funny story uh i was kind of a little troublemaker in grade yeah. school with volleyball so every mm -hmm. time the ball came over i would try heading it or kicking it and then yep. be other people would love it but uh my coach didn't like it so i tried once didn't get a point on one of them and then just got sent to the bench right away <laughs> all right so we think it sounds like you've exhausted every other sport but yeah. uh, you haven't found a way to dig any holes and hopefully Red Bull Arena and, you know. No, you doing definitely the right kind of kick in there. <laughs> Never. The field Never. guys would not be happy with you if you do that. So make sure no you do chance. not do yeah. that. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about uh, going to Marquette and playing there for four years. Yeah, so uh, it was my dream school in uh, – Ever since I was young, I wanted to go there because my triplet cousins went there and they were big soccer, avid soccer players. Uh, didn't play competitively, but enjoyed it. And then my neighbor went there. Okay. And then it sort of just like fell into place. So I had committed their sophomore year in high school. And then uh, the first two years were a little slow. I was still getting used to everything. Mm -hmm. And I was able to graduate high school early and start at Marquette. So I ended up graduating on a Friday from Kona and I had to start college uh, four days later on a wow. Tuesday. Wow. So it was a quick change and it was hard to adjust at first yeah. for school, but, and then soccer also, but uh, it took me until about my second semester, my sophomore year to actually get the hang and get the jits of it. Mm -hmm. So then uh, junior year was really successful in making it to the Big East uh, final. Unfortunately, lost to Kyle Zayek and the Georgetown guys. Okay, okay. So uh, that and then senior year had a good year as well. And then, yeah, it was, it was honestly one of the best experiences of my life. I had supportive coaches, teammates, made some of the best friends I've ever had there. So it was awesome. That's that's great. Um, obviously, I'm a, I'm, I'm a St. John's guy, and so uh, I loved loved going out and playing at Marquette. You guys had a great setup there, and you had some rowdy fans. But I'm I'm sure there's a rivalry going on in the locker room. You know, Timmy, like Kyle, like you said, there's a couple of Georgetown guys in there, a couple of Big East guys. How how's the rivalry like in the locker room? Oh, definitely. I mean, here and there, I'll hear some uh past remarks from either chris lemma or kyle just yeah. how i've never beat beaten them yeah and then uh tim since he's a little older i haven't heard had too much of a rivalry between him but ever since i left marquette there's always been a little banter between st yeah. john's and us so well i'm gonna have to that disappoints me a little bit i need tim to be uh 
you know, making sure that rivalry is uh, keeps going. So I'm going to have yeah. words with him, and I'm sure you're going <laughs> to hear from him very, very, very soon. Definitely. Um, take us through your draft night. Um, how, like, what experience was that like for you, kind of realizing like, a dream that you had? Yeah, so draft night was kind of crazy. I had uh, all my closest friends and family in one living room compiled together. And yeah. I just wanted everything to be perfect and had like all these chairs set up and just wanted everybody to, who played a big role in my life to be a part of it. And I was nervous. I didn't really know where I was going. And it's definitely a crazy feeling because you don't know when you're going to go or where you're going to go. It kind of just like happens once your name's called. And then uh, once I had heard that Red Bulls had traded up and picked me it was like a surreal feeling because I had went to one of the camps in December with them yeah. and I loved the coaching staff loved the facility loved the people there and it really just had like a home feeling and family like togetherness which I is really important to me so when I got drafted and I was surprised to even go top 10 as well I wasn't expecting it. So I was just really, like, relieved and happy to be going to Red Bull. Yeah, you had a – I saw the video. You had a squad in that room. It was – Yeah. Yeah. I had a Standing camera room crew. I had a camera crew who came, and it was fun because they were able to capture the moment. And then I had my close high school friends and then uh, my best friends from college there. And then, yeah. It's awesome. What was that like being able to celebrate with the, all those people that helped you along the way? Yeah, it was crazy. I mean, they've always supported me for a very long time. And it was kind of like a surreal moment with my mom and my dad, because after all the times traveling uh, to trainings and back and just leaving school, leaving high school early, your second semester of high school and missing out on so much and to see all these things like come into place and pay off is just a huge remark that's awesome that's that's great that you're able to share that experience yeah. with everyone tell us uh, a little bit about preseason how was that how was getting to get to know the guys kind of be integrated in the team what kind of uh, emotions did you go through going into preseason yeah uh preseason uh was definitely nerve-wracking it but I went in with a lot of confidence. I was confident in my ability to play. And a big part of it in preseason is just being able to do what you've done in college and realize like Red Bulls drafted you for a reason and to apply that on the field. And then also when you're on the field, just to work hard and work smart and just don't give up and then apply what the coaches are telling you, what the veterans are telling you. And just to earn that respect from those older guys and these players who have had this experience and learn the sort of ropes they've done and just be able to apply that to the field with them and off the field. So That's awesome. Did uh, one player in particular kind of take you under their wing or was it a more collective effort from everyone? There were a lot of guys who took me under their wing. I'd say uh, Tim Parker helped a lot, just – in the defensive area and uh, just his confidence in believing in me as well as Ryan Mira. And then uh, Kyle Duncan helping me in their role as like an outside back. So those three guys really stood out and helped a lot. That's awesome. Now we need to get into something pretty serious. And I think everyone wants to know how did your rookie performance go with uh, Did you sing a song for the team? What was what was that like? Yeah, I sung Ain't No Mountain High Enough, okay. and that's, like, my go-to song. Yeah. I love classic music. Okay. So uh, I went all out. I was dancing with it, singing to the top of my lungs. So Okay. Did uh, the everyone respond pretty well? Yeah, I had, I had everybody clapping when it was like, Ain't No Mountain There you go. Yeah. There we go. So everybody was getting involved. <laughs> Nice. Now I heard from, uh, I asked Danny Royer last time uh, who had the best performance. So uh, it sounds like you may have, but he said everyone was terrible. So I don't know. You may have to have words with Danny. 
Yeah, I might have to talk to him about that. But if it were to be anyone, it had to have been me. I'm the same. Right. If he had I'll, to pick, I'll take your word for it. Um, is uh, we got a, we got another question from the fans. What was the toughest part of transitioning between NCAA soccer and MLS? I'd say the toughest part is just going back to phase one. You come from college being somewhat of a standout player and being one of the older guys captaining a team and then coming into an MLS team and just having to earn that respect and be able to uh, learn from the older guys, like I mentioned before, and just be able to apply yourself each and every day. Nice. How about the first time stepping into Red Bull Arena? What was that experience like stepping on the field there? Yeah, it was a surreal feeling for sure. I've I've never played in a stadium that big. Uh, the biggest stadium I've played in was uh, Bush Stadium, okay. uh, the Cardinals yep. baseball, but yep. that was an academy, so that was only like ten people there <laughs> who were parents. There you go. <laughs> but uh, to step in a Red Bull Arena and play in front of thousands of people who I've never played in front of before, because preseason you don't play in front of fans. And uh, to be in front of all those people as a rookie is de definitely a surreal moment when you're just like, you were once a fan, you were once that little kid watching these professional games. So to be able to do that and be on the field is definitely an amazing moment. That's awesome. Did you have uh, any family at that first game? Yeah, my mom and my aunt actually, uh, they drove my car out. Oh, to nice. Jersey, so uh, they were able to be there for that moment, and then I was able to take them to the airport the next day. So it was it was cool. They enjoyed it. Yeah, definitely. And uh, my mom has always been someone who's been really supportive of my soccer career. Whether it was a home or away game in college, she would always go to each and every game. Even when we went on our European trip, she was at wow. our one of our games in England. So she's been very supportive throughout all my life, which I'm thankful for. Wow. That's amazing. Now, uh, hopefully you've, you've rewarded her. Did you give her anything in particular, uh, you know, thanking her along the way? I know you yeah. really might've given her something after your first game. Yeah. I I'll pull it out. I gave her my first Jersey. I still have. There you go. That's for Mama Seagrass. Yep. And these are the best kits I've ever seen, for sure. <laughs> nice. Love it. Yeah. Well, that's a good gift. All the hard Definitely. work has paid off. Exactly. Now, tell me tell me a little bit more about that first game. Um, obviously, there's a lot of talk in the offseason, um, you know, surrounding the club, but it really felt like there was a big t togetherness, you know, inside that locker room, and it seemed like it's been building all offseason throughout preseason. It seemed like the team was really – really together and focused going into the, that game. And it, I always said that, you know, I feel like the club, it's – we thrive when there's a chip on our shoulder. So tell me a little bit what it was like inside the locker room. Yeah, in the locker room, I think we all knew what we had to come out and do. We had to come out with a win, show everybody how we've been preparing and showing that knit togetherness that we've had. And just going in the first day when I arrived, just like everybody felt like family. It felt like I've been there for a numerous amount of years, which is important when you're in a locker room. You want to have that connectedness with everybody. So everybody was on the same page. Everybody was bought into what we were planning on doing. And we came out with a win because we prepared well for it and got the result. That's awesome. Now we'll transition a little bit. What what's it like being back at home? You know, you're a professional soccer player. You you know, you had a little taste of independence. What's it like being home? You know, under your the roof of you know your childhood home. What's what's that like? Yeah, it's it's different because currently in this situation can't uh, socialize with anybody. But my neighbors are kind of like. Uh, well, he's a professional soccer player now, so when they see me, they get really excited and wave. But uh, it's been tough to be able to just train and do things on your own because you're not with the team or with another person. So I've, j I've been making the most of it, whether it's 
using the field, going on a run, bike, and but at the same time, even though it's been tough, it's been good to just spend time with family, be at home. Uh, definitely fun seeing my dog. He's not here right now. He's with my dad, but uh, it's definitely good to spend time with all of them. I was going to say, it's you haven't exactly been alone. We've seen a lot of your videos training with your dog. Yep, exactly. He's been and a big I, help to you. Yep, exactly. So he's uh, about three, four years old, Black Lab, and he's been definitely making the most of being home a lot better. There you go. We have uh, another question from one of the fans. If you could play another position besides left back, what would you play? Uh, I would play left center back, just being able to see the whole field and maybe uh, ping a few long balls or move up the field, big tackles, things like that. So that'd be nice. fun. Cool. What else have you been doing to, to stay busy while you've been at home? I, I noticed today that Red Bull put out that you have a new TikTok. And yeah. I, and I saw that <laughs> video. And I have to say, my surgically repaired knee was screaming. It was it was yeah. crying when it saw that. How did you come? Were you able to walk after that? Yeah, it actually didn't hurt because it was raining. So mm -hmm. it just made like a huge divot. And I'm uh, good friends with the grounds crew. So they're kind of just laughing about it. Kind of like, well, at least you scored. So they didn't mind me fixing it. But yeah, I've been making TikToks that more like in a comedy area. Yeah. Just to get people like in a more positive mood, get a little laugh. And uh, what else? I recently bought a Wii. So I'm okay. going to be on Wii Sports a lot. Netflix, uh, bike rides, like I mentioned, uh, playing cribbage and things like that. So just nice. trying gonna, to stay busy. I'm going to have to look up this game cribbage. I'm curious. Yeah, it's an old game, so... Not a whole right. lot of people play it anymore. <laughs> All right, I'll have to check it out. How about any other type of workout stuff that you've been doing uh, outside of the team workouts? You know, obviously you said you bike riding around town. You get recognized a lot around town now? Uh, not not a whole lot because in my town, I didn't go to high school. In my yeah. town, I went to a public school uh, about 20 minutes away and used my sister's address because it was okay. more suiting and better, like, for me in an educational standpoint and fit well with club. So now a whole lot of people from Streamwood even know I really live in Streamwood. So gotcha. a lot of things I've been doing to stay active, just uh, playing soccer out front, whether it's just kicking it against a curb, doing some cone drills, things like that. And then uh, I've been doing a lot of crunches and push-ups. So me and my college buddies have been doing this thing for about a week. Every week we'd do like a thousand push-ups, thousand, thousand sit-ups, and then the next week increase it by 500. So this week we're on 2,500 push-ups. We're gonna try and knock out in seven days. So nice. we'll see how that goes. <laughs> good, good luck with that. <laughs> yeah. How about, uh, we got another question from fans. Uh, tip for any college, college soccer players that are trying to make it pro. Could you repeat that? Sorry. Do you have any tips for college soccer players trying to go pro? I would say just make yourself stand out in college and be bought into the program. That doesn't necessarily mean being the best player. That means just doing things in the community, doing things, uh, talking to uh, whether it's your coach or integrating and having a good representation in the classroom. So just applying all those things and being able to make the most out of not only your college uh, career, but make the most out of just college in general. So, Awesome. All right, we're going to do some rapid fire questions. You ready? Yep. Let's do right. it. Let's get into it. Favorite music artist? Uh, Arizona Zervas. All right. Favorite. Up and coming. Up and coming. Right, I'll have to look out for that. Cribbage and Arizona Zervas. All right. Favorite food? Uh, Chinese or Mexican. Favorite sport outside of soccer? Golf. Huge golfer in my free time. You and me, we're going to play someday. We have to. 
favorite uh, favorite hobby outside of soccer? Well, that would be golf. But other than golf, uh, I would say mm, probably Monopoly. All right, Monopoly it is. Favorite Netflix show? Uh, Imposters. I haven't heard of that one. Got to check that out too. Yeah. Favorite movie? Uh, Dark Knight. Nice. Favorite book? Uh, Can't Hurt Me by David Goggins. Favorite cheat meal? Favorite cheat meal? I would say uh, tacos. Tacos, all right. Favorite player as a kid? Favorite player as a kid? David Beckham. Favorite player now? Ooh, Andrew, Andrew Robertson on Liverpool. Awesome. Favorite Halloween costume you dressed up as? Uh, I was a blue Power Ranger for four years straight when I was younger. Nice. Solid. Uh, favorite store to shop at? Uh, Lululemon. Always. Love it. Love it. If you could be on any show, which one? Uh, if I could be on any show, I would say Ozarks. All right. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Would you Would you be uh, coming in from out of town, or would you be a townie? I'd I'd be the townie. Love it. Love it. Um, Desert Island. What three things are you taking with you? Um, is there uh internet there or no? No, it's a desert island, man. <laughs> uh, I'd say a soccer ball, uh, my headphones, and then my phone. All right. This guy's been playing Desert Island like every day outside his house training. Which teammate would you be taking on the Desert Island with you? I'd take uh, Sean Nealis. Seems right. like a survivor type of guy. All right. All right. All right. I'm going to get into a couple questions with you now. I'm going to challenge you. I'll ask you to get an item for us and, you know, within your room, and then you bring it back to us and explain a little bit. Favorite childhood soccer item? Um, I would say my uh, soccer's jersey. That, you, got, uh, you got one for us? Yeah. I, I have a lot of them, but this was like the last one I wore before I went off to college. Yeah, so. Eat your heart out, Chicago Fire. Exactly. <laughs> All right. How about a uh, favorite childhood picture? Ooh, I'll have to bring you guys to this one. Uh, this is me in a dental magazine when I was younger. Oh my you could see wow. me gluing a tooth back. <laughs> gluing a tooth back okay so, how'd you get in that dental magazine yeah so back in the day my mom used to work for a company called visco that supplies dental okay, products okay. and then uh, so somehow i got she was asked because i was a little kid then if i could be in a magazine so then that photo was all over uh dental uh hospital dental places nice. all over the chicago area so gosh gotcha. you see you've been a star for a little a long time now a little bit it was an up and coming type of thing <laughs> nice how about a trophy you're most proud of um i have a few so these are my big east ones they're all individual ones that i have I won't stand up. And yeah. then, are you gonna bring? You gonna bring those back to the? You know, put them in the locker room for all the other Big East guys to see. Ah, uh, I don't know. Probably not. They just <laughs> bring up the Big East championship. So, all right, yeah. fair enough. How about your most prized soccer item? Ooh, most prized soccer item. I'd say. My draft scarf from draft day. And as you can see, you that's my 
last Marquette jersey. Love it. Yeah. Awesome. All right, and then last question before we wrap up here. One item you cannot live without. I would say my Apple TV right okay. over here. So if I didn't have that while I was home, I don't know what I would be able to do. <laughs> Crucial in this day and age, I guess. Exactly, yeah. Nice. Well, Patrick, thank you for giving us a chance to get to know you tonight. You know, we all hope you're doing well at home and we're anxiously awaiting to watch you back again on the field. Uh, any words for the fans out there? Uh, I would just say I hope you guys are all staying safe and healthy and making the most of being with your friends and family. And I hope that we can be back as soon as possible. Awesome. Patrick, thank you again. A big thank you to our partner, Evian, for connecting us with you guys tonight. Fans, look out for future New York Red Bull virtual player appearances in the weeks to come. But in the meantime, be kind, be safe, stay home. We'll see you next time. Patrick, thanks again, buddy. Awesome. Thanks, Connor. And I'll talk to you later. See ya.